Well, this is a very cheap 10 watt LED. And today we're going to be adding this into this so that besides the standard interior light, we'll have this in here with it. So when that fades out and goes off, we can still do this and have it set at different brightnesses or depending just how we need it. Watch the video and see how we go on. After down, here's one of the 10 watt, 12 volt LEDs off eBay. Unfortunately, 12 volt doesn't mean 12 volt for your car. Because your car is going to be anything from 11 to 14. And 11 would be fine and 14 wouldn't. They'd get very hot. The degrade if it stop working, the pack up in no time. So you need a bit of resistance. Um, here out the box, I found a couple of 6.2 ohm resistors twisted together to give you 3.1 ohms. I uh, forgot what wattage they are, but they get warm, they don't get hot, and they serve a nice job of protecting this LED. If you're going to put them anywhere in a car, I'd recommend 3 to 6 ohms. It's just to be on the safe side and get the, the voltage on the LED down to 9 or 10 volts. You're not going to miss out on much in the way of brightness. They're fairly bright, they're not the most efficient LED in the world, but they're going to be better than your average 6 volt bulb that gets put in side lights and things and they'll do for interior lights as well which is where this one's going to go now the issue we have with them also is that these do get a bit warm because all that wattage in a kind of a centimetre space soon gets up so I've aldated them to an up and bolt I aldated it to that nut and bolt that helps pull the heat out of it and keeps it cool and stops it from degrading and going pop. So that's the best way I've found to fit these. Also on eBay I found these small 12 volt dimmers and you get the remote and the combined dimmer receiver unit and quite cheaply. Uh, a couple of quid, so I just had to have one. I thought it'd be good to connect to a moderately good LED and put inside the van to provide some interior illumination in the van that could be controlled, turned up and down. I thought it'd just be a nice, a nice addition. So I thought I'll couple this with this, and there we are simple, very simple test of the dimmer. Um, you've got set brightnesses on and off and it does come back on at whatever it was at before when you turned it off and that's true for the remote and for power. If you disconnect power from it and reconnect it, it comes back on where it was so it must store the brightness of having some kind of serial data input or something. So I guess that would wear out eventually. Don't know how many years that would take but I'm not going to worry about it but um, on the remote we have 25 percent 50 and 100 so we'll just go through those there's 25 strobing effects from the PWM on the LED. There's 50 and there's 100. And then you have the brightness up and down which if I hold down the minus button and we start to fade out and go all the way down and there we are back to the bottom. Besides the brightness and the presets we've got some mode buttons mode up and down and speed up and down mode up and down just steps through some set programs that it has of different flashing 
kind of things and if I hold the speed down button you can see it doesn't do it as fast and the speed up again and we should get back to a faster <laughs> uh, try a different pattern now we are we've just got a simple rash on and off modes the green button takes it straight back to being a standard light and then we could turn the brightness back up and back down and 25 50 100 and on and off simply on and off so if my thumb being in the way the camera there but I don't think I covered anything would be useful so the next thing to do with this is to combine it into the old interior light. Now I was going to take the bulb out and I thought there's all that wasted space at the side. So that's how it's going to end up fitted. The extra hole that I didn't drill is coming handy for passing the wires out the back. And now the next plan is on the back of this is to add some washers. And the idea is by in these washers in the back of here and alternating with big ones and small ones can build up a kind of heat sink arrangement which will allow more surface area to get shut of the heat from the LED. So there we are, we've got the LED mounted tightened in with a nut and bolt, some washers for heat sinking. Now I've got to do is solder the connections to the resistor and the dimmer and the um, insulator and the ice and then we can pop this back in and I've got a remote controlled night light in my van. And there we are with it back in its uh, original fixing with the original old bulb in with its improvised heat sink and now it shines through the front quite nice there we go just need now to clip it back into the van and connect it to power and it's a winner well there's the dimmer tucked up inside and the original plugs back in Whoa. Set for being back in now. A bit of a push, and there you are. It's a, an invisible upgrade. Apart from you can see the LED, just a tiny bit, who cares? But there we go. Tucked in nice, and um, the original bulb's still in there, the LED's in there, the dimmer's behind there. And more working. I think I'll call this one a success and a finished job. Thanks for sticking with me and bearing with me through this upgrade. I hope you can probably find some of these on eBay yourself and do a few of your own. It's a, a nice thing to have, a bit of light, and not to be 
wasted energy on old fashioned bulbs where there's more heat than, than what you need. With these LEDs I think I can not worry about having them turned on all night if needed. I don't think they'd ever flatten the battery. But as I said, I think I'll call this a success. Thanks for watching. Please click the like button if you're not subscribed. Stick with us, you never know what I'll be doing next. And thanks for watching. Bye. One of the hardest parts of doing your act tricks on vehicles. It's not the act tricks. It's trying to get something behind panels to run cables to come out the back where you're going to need them. Because getting anything down or behind anywhere is, is mission impossible. It is. I've spent at least 40 minutes trying to find a way to get a wire from there to there down to here. And I've only just managed to get this through on me umpteenth attempt.